Okay, so we're going to talk a little bit about this idea of the bridegroom. I've been mentioning that at the end of the 13, 35 days, the bridegroom comes. Yes. Now, there's a lot of complexities, um, you know, to explain this, but I'll... Um, so the prophetic time of Daniel chapter 12 um, has been connected to the command in um, Habakkuk 2 that says... Um, write the vision and make it plain upon brochures that he may run who reads it <clears throat> for um, he that comes will come um, and when he comes he will speak and though he tarry wait for him um, because he will surely come now this is a reference to the coming of the bridegroom in Jesus story about the uh, ten virgins. Now this is given in Matthew 25 and the story goes something like this and it fits into the bigger picture of the bridegroom marrying the bride um, which is the Hebrew wedding ceremony um, which actually depicts for us the entire story of um, the entire story all the way from the very beginning to the very end um, so I'll, I'll explain it and, every, and you'll understand how it sort of all fits together. So um, it goes like this, the Father and Son, uh, and this, is, uh, this has happened in reality with God the Father and His Son, consult together to decide on a bride for the Son. Um, when they decide who it's going to be, the, uh, they write up a ketubah, which is a covenant um, or, or a statement of promise and how they want things to be, how life is going to be in the home. And um, a bride price is, um, uh, is, is calculated and, and, and gathered and gifts are... Um, gathered as well and the son will make the trek to the bride's home so this all relates to the story of the father and the son consulting together and, and humanity becoming the bride for Christ uh, for his own son and Christ made the journey to our earth and he um, bought the the bride price which was his death because he had to satisfy the redemption um, price and he bought the gifts which was um, the spiritual gifts the gift of the Holy Spirit um, that brings all other gifts and blessings and the, he the gift of healing and other things and um, um, so we've got the uh, the gifts the bride price and the ketubah and the ketubah which is the new covenant Jesus says this is the new covenant in my blood so Jesus died to end the first covenant and usher in a new covenant and so with within this whole story um, within the Hebrew wedding ceremony they would act this out in their own weddings and so we see the story of um, of Jesus marriage to his people depicted through the wedding and one one night Jesus was uh, with his disciples and they were looking on a wedding scene and Jesus told this story of ten virgins who were uh, waiting for the wedding now what would happen was the bridegroom would come at night time at midnight usually um, very very dark and uh, the friend of the bridegroom would give the announcement behold the bridegroom comes go out to meet him and Jesus had already identified himself as the bridegroom and the disciples as the bride and John had recognized himself as the friend of the bridegroom in the whole wedding story and so when Jesus looks on this scene and he sees the ten um, bridesmaids that are there with their lamps so I'm just going to pull out a lamp here so they had their little lamp and it was an oil lamp and it would have been burning because they had to light the procession because this great procession would go over night time with, with trumpets so here we go I've got the shofar they'd be blowing the shofar and they'd have their lamps so it's a very noisy and brilliant occasion in the middle of the night as the bridegroom comes to get his bride and the, um, the ten virgins are, they're the bridesmaids and they're sitting around they're waiting for the bridegroom to come he's delayed 
Remember that little quote that I just gave you, that passage that says, though he tarry, wait for him. So the bridegroom tarries. Now we knew that the bridegroom for us came in 2019 with the ecological conversion issue, but he hasn't manifested, but he, he's, um, he's about to arrive at the end he comes at the end of the vision so the bridegroom is coming and the call is going out now behold the bridegroom comes and so in this story Jesus uh, says the call goes out at midnight behold the bridegroom comes go out to meet him all the virgins go to their lamps to trim their lamps and they discover their lamps are going out oh no we haven't got enough oil and the wise ones had gone off and bought another little container of oil so they could fill up their lamp but the foolish ones hadn't expected a delay and they hadn't anticipated um, you know that they might need to buy some more oil so the foolish ones run off to get more oil while the wise ones go with the procession and they light the way back to the father's house because the bridegroom will take his bride and the bridesmaids back to his father's house where he's been building a mansion so Jesus says in in John chapter 14 he says um, let not your heart be troubled you believe in God believe also in me in my father's house there's many mansions if it were not so I would have told you I go to prepare a place for you and if I go and prepare a place for you I will come back and receive you unto myself that where I am there you may be also now this is effectively what the bride any bridegroom would say to his bride when he came to present the ketuba to her so I haven't shared that little bit have I it's a little bit jumbled I'm, I'm mixing up a whole lot of things here together but when the bridegroom would get to the bride's house he would obviously present the Ketuba, he would present the gifts, uh, he would present the bride price and obviously the bride would be there checking him out and she'd be having a good look at the Ketuba, you know, um, do I really want to, you know, get married to this man and her way of indicating whether she would accept his proposal to her would be to drink a cup of wine that would be poured out and so Jesus at the Last Supper pours this cup of wine just as would be done in the wedding ceremony so Jesus is indicating through all the symbols of this event that he's entering into a wedding covenant with the disciples he says this is the new covenant in my blood and um, <clears throat> So this is what would happen and if the bride said yes and she drank the, drank the cup, she was indicating that she would um, accept the same fate as her husband. Whatever her husband's fate was, she would join in and accept his fate. That's what it represented. And she would then, he would say, I'm going back, you know, to build the little chapa on my father's house. When my father tells me that it's ready, then I'll come back and get you. Now, this is exactly what Jesus says in Matthew 24. He says, he says, I don't know when I'll be coming to get you. He says, the angels in heaven don't know, but only my father knows when um, the time will be. And so he was repeating the very words that a bridegroom would say. And so um, the bride, after she's accepted the betrothal, she would go and she would hang her wedding dress in her room. She would have her light in her window. She would have it burning. Um, she would pack her bag and she would be reading, busy reading her ketuba. So where's my ketuba? All right, so this is, this is our ketuba. This is our our wedding covenant, uh, the wedding um, got all of Jesus' promises to us along with how he likes things run in his house. And so she would be reading her ketuba and then all of a sudden this enormous event would break through in the darkness. Now this is all very relevant for us because the call is going out now that the bridegroom is coming. The bridegroom comes in this test, this Sabbath Sunday issue this final 
um, Earth's final crisis issue, I've called it, and it is a judgment out issue for everybody. It's actually a harvest issue, and it will separate humanity into two great groups. And so we're going to take a little bit of a look at this now.